Hello, everyone. My name is Mickey Samiari, and I'm on the product marketing team here at Boomi. So today we're going to take a quick look at Boomi's new cloud API management offering. So cloud API management, or CAM for short, is an enterprise grade API management solution with a number of features that we could spend all day talking about and still wouldn't scratch the surface. So for today's demo, we're going to focus on how we can manage and govern API consumption at scale. So let's start by pulling in a new API into cloud API management. So we can do that by navigating to the API definitions page. And from there, we have a few options in terms of how we can actually pull in this API. We can use a file, whether that's a Swagger or open API spec. We can import from a URI, or we could roll up our sleeves and manually create the APIs ourselves. So for this example, let me go ahead and import a file. So I have a couple APIs here. I'll grab the product listing API. We go ahead and preview. And once I brought in that file, we can see it's showcasing to me all the endpoints available with that API. So I'll do save and continue. And you can see success. So once you bring an API into cloud API management, it essentially becomes your playground where you have full control to customize this API, right? You can add on to the API by creating additional endpoints. We can adjust the security on this MPI and we can ultimately define what the consumption experience will be with all these tools that we have at hand. So if I go ahead and click view API, right on this main screen, we, we have some high level information. Firstly, we can see the version of this API, that being 3.1. We can see when I imported it into CAM. And then on this screen, we're seeing all of the endpoints again that came along with that API. Looking over to the left side panel, right, API definition settings is really crucial when we're packaging APIs together. But this is how we can define the name and description and even adjust the version of this API. Security settings gives us the ability to protect our APIs with OAuth authentication. So you can see right now it's disabled, but if I were to toggle this on, some additional options are presented. These options are really how you can control and configure what is and isn't supported when it comes to interacting with this API. So if I cancel this and we'll go back to endpoints. So let's get a little bit creative, right? So what I'm gonna do is jump into the products endpoint. Now from here, we have a number of options in terms of how we can secure and govern specific endpoints of our API. So for example, key and method detection lets me configure the endpoint type. Things like what method types are supported, where should they exist in the request, and even the request authentication type. And so this gives us the ability to require different auth types for specific endpoints from an API. We can override whatever that security setting was set at the API level for the specific endpoints to really get that granular control. But for now, what I'm gonna do is create a new method. So methods allow us to get precise control over API traffic. So let's just say I have an external audience and an internal audience that will potentially be hitting these APIs, right? In that sense, there might be some fields that I don't want external people to see or they shouldn't see when they're interacting with these APIs. And so a method definition is gonna let us control just that. So in this example, right, if someone is hitting that products API endpoint, the idea is they're gonna be given all this information here, right? The ID, internal ID, name, and description. When it comes to my external audience, I don't necessarily want them to see this internal ID, right? They don't need that information. So I'm setting up this definition to be able to control that. So what I'll do now is create this. So now that we've defined our method, we can make a filter out of this, but we'll get to that in a second. Before that, what I wanna do is create a new package that includes this API that we just brought in. So I'll, I'll, I'll navigate over to packages and we can go ahead and create a new API package. API packages are how we can manage, govern, and distribute APIs at scale. You can use them as a way to get more usage out of your APIs and even open up new revenue streams with the flexibility that comes with grouping together multiple APIs. But the way cloud API management does it is a bit different. 
Typically, plans, which are ways to customize user access, are handled at a global level. But with CAM, we're actually handling this on a plan-to-plan -plan basis. And this is giving you a new layer of control for your APIs. So if we just step back and look at our existing API package here, the Pet Store APIs, we can see we have two plans, an internal plan and a free plan. So if we just take a look at the internal plan, the rate limits tab, we can see we have a quota of 10,000 calls per day. And for the key property, we're actually disabling self-service key provisioning. So you can't access the dev portal and get your own key for this specific plan. If you look at the free tier, right, we can see for this one, we have 50 calls per day. Uh, we do allow you to self-service your, your key, but we actually have a expiration date of 30 days before you have to get a new key, right? So you can see some of the differences between these two plans. But for our new package, what we're going to do is create a new set of plans to accompany this use case that we're kind of following. So for the first plan, I'll do, I'll just do a simple internal and external plan or internal usage. I'll do save and continue. And the big thing here that we want to do is go over to plan designer with plan designer. We can adjust what APIs, right? So if you want the starlight and the pet store, but we can also define what endpoints this, this plan has access to. So they could have access to the starlight retail product catalog, but we only want to give them access to the product endpoints as an example here for this one, I'll, I'll make it just so it's the starlight. And then we'll give them access to all of these. But what you'll notice here is we now have that method that I set up prior. So again, for the product endpoint, what I'm going to be doing is defining what fields are actually displayed to our end users when they act, when they hit this API endpoint. So I'll save this and then I'll go ahead and create just another plan. So we have two. All right. So now I have two basic plans, right? One is for an external audience. The other is for an internal audience. So when it comes to that external audience, there may be some fields that I don't want that audience to be, uh, you know, receiving once they hit my API. So to do that, what we're going to do is create a response filter. So when I come over here, we can see, I have my two packages, the pet store APIs and the starlight retail. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create a new filter for the service. We're going to select the product catalog API, and then we have that method defined for the products endpoint. And we can already see we have that method right there. So with that created, we now have a preview of what this will look like when it comes to someone actually interacting with that API. So if I select everything, this will mean that we're actually going to filter out everything. So right with this filter attached to a specific plan, if you hit the API, we're not going to give you anything. But again, what we want to do is really just hide the internal ID from our external audience. Right. So I'll go ahead and click save. And then what I'll do is I'll do um, um, external use we'll click save now we have a new filter created so if we hop back to our packages we go to starlight retail and then if we navigate to the external plan on this home page where we're seeing all of the apis available in this bottom section we now have a, an ability to select a response filter as so we can see we have that that filter that we just created. So again, for this specific plan, for the external plan, if they hit the product's API, we're going to ensure that it is running through this filter, thus preventing the internal ID from being presented to them. All right. So with that, we've just went over some ways cloud API management helps essentially manage your APIs with API products. And then plans are a way to create different experiences for the different audiences of your APIs. So now before we swap over to the developer portal, let's take a quick look at how cloud API management helps track and monitor performance of your APIs. All right. So I've switched into a more active account so we can get a better look at, uh, at this. So what I'll do to start is hop over to the analyze tab and jump into executive summary. So at the top of the executive summary, we have a heat map that represents total API calls per month. 
And then we can hover over the specific day to see the total number of calls. But overall, the executive summary gives a holistic view on your account and all the APIs you have that are active. And then from there, it breaks it down into three categories. So the management summary is meant for more business oriented users. Things like total API calls across the board and usage summary data helps you understand how active your APIs are for the last week, month and quarter. The technical summary provides metrics for a more technical audience, availability, latency, and how much data has been served or displayed in this section. And the dev summary is tailored for people who are designing the APIs, right? These metrics are really focused on the developer portal usage. And lastly, I mean, we could spend all day here when it comes to reporting with cloud API management, but the last piece that I want to highlight is going to be the reports tab. And so the reports tab gives us a more granular view, right? We can analyze specific API calls. Like I said, there's a lot more when it comes to reporting insights, but we'll leave it there for now. So let's switch gears and take a quick look at the developer portal. All right, the time changed, so we're seeing dark mode now, but either way, to start, we can easily navigate to the developer portal by clicking on these the dots in the top right. And you can see we have a direct link here. But before we jump into this, let's just look at what the setup looks like. So if we come back to the command, the control center, uh, and then we go to portal settings, this is how we can begin setting up our developer portal. So general tab is pretty straightforward and basic, right? This is where we're gonna establish a portal name. And from there, you can quickly jump into the other pieces that, that fuel our developer portal. So the portal setup tab lets you customize the CSS of your portal. And then if we scroll down, we can also adjust the primary navigation between the actual link names, what those links URLs look like. And then we can also add and remove some footer links as well. So if you want to contact us, if you want to add our website, things of that nature can be easily added here. The rest of these tabs are pretty self-explanatory, right? The domain names is us setting up the various domains for our developer portals. The content tab is really just us selecting which pieces of content will be displayed. Uh, if we actually want to adjust the content, we can do that from the content tab here under manage. If we jump back over to the dev portal, we can see this is our homepage. Again, this is all customizable by you, how you'd like to um, craft that. The documentation, same situation here. We can have some hyperlinks on the side if you want a quick link to things in on this page. And then ultimately the API console tab is where we could test out APIs. But for now, it's not showing me anything. And that's because I'm not signed in. So if I go ahead and sign in, we can see now when I try to go to the API console, I'm given options for those two API packages that I created. So this interactive API documentation lets us kind of see what all the, firstly the endpoints are, and then the methods that we have available to us. And so if we go over to my account, this is where we can see a holistic view of all the keys and applications that you might have, right? So if you have multiple keys, multiple applications, you'll be able to manage them all here. So with that, that is a quick demo of the control center and the developer portal for Boomi's new cloud API management solution.